Hello website, this is Fahad from Fisher Phone and today I have a MacBook Pro to repair. The model number is A2141 and the number on the board is uh, A2001700-A and uh, this came in for no power. Uh, it's a very good opportunity to learn why we should use some thermal sensing cameras because they can we can use these tools to speed up our job and we can diagnose them very quickly so we will be testing this uh, macbook with this uh, c type charger and uh, usb amp meter i want you to have a look at this when i connect to this charging port i'm receiving 5 volt and 305 amps and uh, sometimes is uh, 200 amps 300 amps but uh, the voltage is not reaching to 19 volts so you can see here so it's 5 volt and 0 0.261 amps sometimes 300 amps this voltage is not reaching to so 19 volts so there is something wrong uh, usually um, this sort of problem comes when your cd32 ic's are faulty which is here uh, there are like four ic's in this board two on this side of the board and two on this side of the board here uh, so behind this board i have checked uh, this board a little bit and it does not look like any water damage let's go into the microscope and check we are in the microscope now and uh, let's start checking by the cd32 ic's Let's check which type of ICs are in there. So is it CD3217B12? And you can see this area looks clean. There is no damage here. And here is also no problems. Looks okay. Let's check this uh, MacBook with the thermal sensing camera. Uh, my thermal sensing camera is ready. And I'm going to insert the uh, USB amp meter and if there is any shortage I should see some heat spots on this board and uh, I do find one uh, which is here so you can see this area is heating up exceptionally we'll check what is happening in this area so let me point it to I think it's uh, this area here which is heating up so I've removed the uh, the power from the uh, charger and uh, let's check what is happening here let's go in the microscope you can see instantly we can find there is some a row of capacitors here and they don't look in the very good shape here so I think this one is in a very bad uh, state at the moment and let's see what these uh, capacitors are doing uh, let me open my schematics in this section I think it is these caps here okay so if I just rotate it and let's look at these caps so these two caps they were in the very bad condition and they are related to rtc regulator this is the pp3v3 underscore g3 hot so it's a 3.3 volt rail and uh, this is supposed to be connected to this uh, ic here u6960 so let's check these caps uh, if they are short so let's go into the microscope again uh, let's let's check what these capacitors if they are really short because they look in the very bad condition at the moment and I'm in the diode range right now so red probe on the ground and let's check so this was ground and this should not be ground so there is one more this is ground this should not be ground so it's coming up full short so without wasting any time let's just remove these caps but before i remove these caps i would i want to just remove this battery 
so there should be no power while I'm working on this. The screw is removed. So I've removed this big screw for the battery. And uh, let's look at these caps. So these two caps, they look in a very bad state and we've seen them they are short as well so let's just start by removing these two caps so, and hopefully we do not have a short after that So one of them is just almost off. This one is off. Let's move the other one. This one. Okay, let's check these caps first. So we have removed these two caps and let's see if they are both sh uh, short. So this one is short and this does not look like it's short. So this is a good cap but the condition it's in is going to fail. So we won't use this cap on this board any go anymore because this will eventually fail. And uh, let's check on the line if we have the shortage on this line. Still we have a short or not. We are in the diode range right now and we will check if there is any value on these uh, lines so we have some value and if there is a value that means it's a healthy line so i'll we'll check the other one and we have a value on this uh, capacitors uh, line as well so this is this is good this was uh, ground so it should be beeping uh, and there we go okay so this is how it is we have removed these two caps let's let me find some uh, capacitors compatible capacitor from the donor board we will install them and check if uh, the short is gone and our voltage is reaching to 19 volts at the usb amp meter so i have just found out uh, another donor board and uh, let me find out if we have some compatible capacitor on this one So yeah, I found these caps to be compatible. These, there's a line of four capacitors. So I'll just take from here and put them here. Okay, before I put these caps here, I'll put some flux here because uh, many times when you are replacing these small parts, uh, you have this problem that uh, as soon as uh, you bring your hot air station um, close to the component uh, it just disappears so we don't want that if you don't want that you need to put some flux in the area where you want to uh, drop your uh, components so I have put some flux in this section here and I'm removing this cap here temperature is very low it's on 370 so it's a full throttle 500 and I'll just drop it here one more I'll drop here now these two caps are in the flux so they did not just disappear somewhere they are here if I bring my hot air station and try and put them back on so they they won't just fly away because the flux will hold them so you can see so there is installed now let's check one more time we are still in the diode mode range 
and we will look for a healthy value on this side of the capacitors so we have a healthy value here and we have a value here also this is ground so this should beep and which is doing right now okay so these two faulty caps here these ones and we're just gonna throw them in the bin right now Moved. now next thing I'm going to use some q-tips because uh, they I found them to be very good when I want to remove the excess flux so they are much better than using a brush because with brush uh, the flux uh, still stays on the boat but with this q-tip um, the the flux will come onto this uh, q-tip and uh, we can clean that flux off the board so this is much better now let's give it one more go okay so now we are going to test again with our USB amp meter and we will see if uh, it is going to the 20 volt range so let's see I don't know if you can see that let's see am I getting 19 volt yes I'm getting 19 volts now and I'm quite sure the board should power on okay you can see the fan is spinning as well now so I think we are almost done let me put this big screw back on for the battery and then we will test if this uh, board is actually powering on so let's connect this again So there we go, um, the fan is spinning, uh, both fans are spinning actually, and let's see if it powers on. So I'm just waiting for any Apple logo sign. Okay, so we don't have Apple logo, strange, we have a Windows sign. So this guy has installed Windows on this MacBook Pro. <laughs> well okay, that's fine, as long as it's working, uh, this is okay. So you can see it's powering on now so this macbook pro is fixed so that's the beauty of uh, some good tools you must have flir camera if you are in this uh, business and if you want to repair stuff uh, it just makes life so easy you can feel uh, i could have felt that uh, heat also with my hands but uh, sometimes this heat is so small you can't detect it in this case it was heating up really bad and uh, I could have felt it with my fingers as well but uh, when whenever there is uh, the heat is small and you can't feel it then this is when your thermal sensor camera is uh, very useful and uh, that is it for now thank you very much thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video do like and subscribe to the channel and uh, if you have any questions you can leave in the comment section thank you bye